Hey Blake, so I wanted to ask a question that um, for newcomers out there that are getting into the Hemi world, um, that you know maybe they're like you, maybe maybe they got some good mechanical uh, mindset, came from a, another background or platform, or they're just you know a, a young cat just just waiting to uh, to get their hands grubby and, and, and greasy on a Hemi motor. What would you recommend is the best? Um, best meaning easiest i guess platform and motor to uh combination to get to to basically get a hemi motor a, a gen 3 hemi motor into a car and just enjoy it and, and and take it for a ride without with the least amount of headaches okay that's a really good question um i really think it depends on your resources and what you can how crafty you can be what, what can you get your hands on for your specific budget um, I like to kind of segment this up as like a budget swap. So you have a budget, maybe three grand or less for, you know, turnkey, three grand or less. And then you have something a little bit middle of the road, say ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 or less. And then you have kind of almost an unlimited budget, unlimited resources, twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 or less. Uh, of course, that excludes the $30,000 Elephant or the, you know, some of these new engines FCAs put out. That are already at twenty-five thousand, but for the sake of this, let's talk about the entry-level person, the budget person who, you know, just really wants to get their feet wet, be very economical, and get in the door with a project. Uh, first thing I would say is look at uh, get as new as you can for the amount that you have to spend. So right now, a lot of the Eagle Hemis, the stuff that's uh, say 2009 and newer is becoming really affordable. I mean, you can now get them for a thousand, 1500 bucks for a full powertrain with harness and, and all the accessories. Uh, if you really want to go super budget friendly, then go with the original, the 2003 through 2008. And I would recommend getting it if you had like an old classic Mopar, uh, old Duster, or something like that. Get the truck engine because. The truck engine has a much tighter accessories package. Usually they're a cheaper engine and like the 2005 wiring harness is just such a breeze to work with. It's so easy. It requires a lot less modification. You could really get like a 05 engine, the whole powertrain harness ECU for like less than 500 bucks or 600 bucks, at least in our area. Um, but that is not to say that, you know, there's some quirks to the original Gen 3 Hemis. Uh, cooling is a big issue. If you don't really properly cool it, have a nice size radiator, and you don't take care of it, they, they have issues with the valve train. So a lot of times you'll get some uh, uh, some valve train, it'll actually drop and the, the seat will drop and that would take out your engine because it'll take out a piston and it does some really nasty stuff. And it's not uncommon to go to a salvage yard and see an engine that's failed in that way because of cooling. Um, Always, if you're gonna get one from a salvage yard, bring a compression tester, test all of the cylinders, make sure it has compression. That tells you right there if it's been catastrophically damaged from that issue happening. Uh, that's really why I try to push more towards the Eagle engines, 2009 and newer. If you can get a 2009 and newer truck engine for, you know, say a thousand bucks instead of paying 500 bucks for the old one with maybe twice the mileage, then definitely stick towards the newer end the better flowing cylinder heads don't have that problem where you can have catastrophic failure. Uh, and it still has a nice tight accessory package that'll fit in an older car. Regardless of it, um, if you're running a car, you're gonna need a center sump oil pan. Those are very budget friendly from like Milladon, I think Canton and two other manufacturers make theirs. Um, that, that's pretty cheap. You're gonna need that for a car. If you have, uh, say, a D100, D150, one of them older first-gen Dodge Rams, uh, having the powertrain come out of a truck is perfect. It already has the rear-mounted uh, sump for the oil pan, so you just get a set of motor mounts uh, from Bouchelon. I think they make the engine mounts, and now Holley. Holley makes the D100 engine mounts to swap the Hemi into those trucks. Bolt it up to your original transmission, that's in the truck and you're just, you're almost there. You're almost cranking it. You just have to, you know, do the, the harness, which is also pretty straightforward. Budget friendly, if let's say you don't even know what vehicle you want to do, um, you just know you want something hemi-swapped, I would go with the D D100, D150, 
and drop it in using some components that are readily available from Holly Bouchelon Performance uh, because you're gonna you could probably get the truck for less than a thousand bucks or two thousand bucks the whole powertrain for you know done turnkey with every modification you need for it for under three thousand bucks and you have a modern driving classic vehicle I think that's kind of the the way to go it's it's very cost friendly uh, it's affordable you don't have a whole lot to to stop you from being successful in that arena. So if I were to talk to a new person coming in, I would say, just as I've said already, try to get you an Eagle engine or newer, you know, 2009 or newer, because it's just gonna be more reliable in the long run. They're out there, they have less mileage, and they have improved reliability. Um, second thing I would do is make sure that you look at the holistic picture if you can get a hellcat engine a wrecked hellcat for two thousand bucks go for it it's not any more difficult you may have a few more things when it comes to intercooling and piping like that but the physical block itself is it's no different you could pretty much swap it in with you know some minor tweaks here and there it's really about being crafty and resourceful whatever you can get your hands on that's within your budget is golden I recommend the truck engines because they're just a little easier to work with the accessory package, but that's completely up to you. It's There's no one size fits all, one answer to all the solutions out there. I really want to encourage you to be crafty and, and check the auctions, the salvage yards, and see what you can get within your price range. Obviously try to get as new as possible, but that shouldn't be a limiting factor. Okay, but sticking, sticking with the budget um, swap, platform I guess um what about a car what car would you choose to okay to be the most budget friendly most budget friendly um you know a lot of the classic Mopars and whatnot they're, they're pretty expensive they're getting up in value every day so if you are looking at okay you already have the car um it really doesn't make a difference. The, the modifications are gonna cost you the same. The engine mounts, the oil pan, that's gonna cost you the same. Um, if you don't have the car and you're, you're trying to pick a car for this project, uh, I think the first things I would look at would be the cheapest of them all is gonna be like a big old sea body, like one of them big old battleship cruisers. You know, this thing's featured, your whole family could fit in it. Uh, that's gonna be the cheapest. You could pick one up for probably under two grand. Then uh, move on to like the FMJ body. So like the Valeres, the Aspens, those things, that's gonna be pretty cheap too. Those, those are very easy to come by. And then after that, the A bodies. A bodies are starting to pick up in value. So it may be harder to get your hands on one um, in a very low price range in good condition. There are many projects out there for cheap, but good drivable condition or one that needs little work for you to get going and, and less delays as a project they're getting up there, so they can be found, but just be uh, thrifty with it. Then I would say the E-bodies next, and as level of expensive uh, taste goes, and then the B-bodies, for some reason, I don't know if it's Fast and the Furious or one of these other movies that came out, the B-bodies are just really high, so if you can get a B-body, go for it. It's really up to you. The cheapest is by far gonna be the C and the FMJ bodies from Chrysler to do the swap in. But but it is harder, I guess, than a truck than just getting a D100, D150. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so the, the D100, D150, they are, I don't want to say a dime a dozen, but you can probably get on a classifieds listing daily. You know, I, we could pull up our phone right now, and I may be able to find you 6 to 12 of them yeah. in decent shape for a builder. And the prices are just, they're low for what you get. You can get a very nice, very clean truck immaculate interior for you know sub three thousand dollar range you know. but is the swappability the same in terms mm -hmm. of a the, you know the cars that you were talking about and the and that d100 d150 the, the swappability is, is the same um the truck's actually a little bit easier because you don't have to buy a specialized oil pan to fit within the k-frame and the steering mechanism the steering linkages of let's say the older car so with the trucks, if you if you were to get a truck pullout engine and put it into a D100, it's it's very very easy really? to swap. I mean, it's I would say if you did your homework and you had all your parts lined out on a nice workbench, it could be a weekend swap for you. It really could be. Awesome.
Please like and subscribe to DIY.